Hey everyone, have you ever tried to learn how to code but got stuck? In my new Private Fan programming class, we're going to break that loop. This course is primarily focused on people who are complete beginners, so don't worry if you don't have any background. This course is different than other courses because we're going to teach you to think like a programmer and solve problems like a robot. So let's get started. Hi everyone. So picking up where we last left off, uh, we were talking about variables and we used variables uh, to try to solve this hours of math problem, right? So we were using hours of math equal to two, and then we plugged it into our equation and we got negative 2.25. Now, let's go back to what we were doing before. We're trying to keep trying different numbers out here that we want to use and trying to calculate it to see if we can get zero to come out because zero is where the roots are and that's the problem we're trying to solve, right? So we want to find the roots of this quadratic equation and we want to keep trying out numbers until we get zero, just to reiterate on what, what we were originally doing. Variables and arithmetic are going to help us out here because now we can just keep changing this number and keep trying out a bunch of different things. So before we were trying out as a math is two and this came out as negative 2.25, which is not what we were looking for. So now we can keep trying different numbers. So if I try hours of math equals three, I'm going to get negative 1.25, which is not zero. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go hours of math equals four. I get 1.75. Now it's positive. So chances are the number we're looking for is between this three and four, right? So I'm just going to guess and do three and a half just to try that out. And I'm getting zero. So I found one of the roots. Now, to be honest with you, I cheated a little bit. I knew that was one of the roots. But here, you can see that this method still kind of, still worked, right? I was just trying out numbers. I kept guessing and checking. And using that kind of logic, I was able to find the correct answer, which is three and a half. So that is one of the roots. But it took a lot of work, and it really took, I was lucky that I tried three and a half. There's no reason it had to be three and a half. It could have been something like three and a quarter, or three and three quarters, or something like that. So there's really no reason why it had to be three and a half. I got a little bit lucky here. I want to just take a step back and look at what we're doing. So we're using the variables and the arithmetic operators really to do this guess and check method. And the way that we went about the guess and check method, we select a number. So here we selected two and then three and then four and then three and a half, right? Then we plug that number into our formula. So hours of math squared minus four times hours of math plus seven over four. And then we check if it's zero, like it was for three and a half, we know we found a root. So that's great. We found our root and we can stop. But if it's not zero, we know we haven't found a root and we have to keep going to find a root. So that's the sequence of steps, those three steps that we've followed to be able to find these roots. Now, what I've just described is actually an algorithm. Now, people get really scared by the word algorithm, but algorithm is really just a sequence of steps to try to find the solution to a problem. In this case, we're trying to find the roots of that quadratic formula, the quadratic equation, sorry. That's what we're, we've done. We've actually created an algorithm without even using a computer. We don't need a computer to make an algorithm. The algorithm is just pick a number, try it out into our equation, and if it gives us the right result, we're happy. If not, we're not happy. And that's the whole algorithm. One of the things that we would like to do is to feed that information into the computer so the computer knows what the algorithm is and tries to solve it for us rather than us just going through the steps of the algorithm ourselves. This is actually going to start with some of the most one of the most powerful things you can learn in programming and it's called a for loop and it's, this is what we're leading up to but first we're going to have to talk about a couple of other things before as prerequisites before we can get there but that for loop is going to be one of the most powerful things you could ever learn in programming and if you only learn one thing from this whole course it should be using a for loop to to solve things it's really that powerful and it's really quite simple once you understand it the first thing we're going to talk about though before we talk about that is we need this idea of what a a list is which is list is a collection of items in python so i'm just going to talk out loud about the numbers that we've tried so we tried one two three four and three and a half until we found our solution right how is there a way that i can codify this in python and the answer is yes the way that we would codify this is in a list so i could i'm going to name this test numbers and i'm going to put in the numbers that we had in here so two sorry one two three four three point five now lists of these collections in python are represented by these square brackets. Square brackets represent lists, and a list is just a collection of different Python objects that we can use. So in Python, this is a list, and if we execute this code, we now have a list called that I've assigned to the variable test numbers, right? So I, if I look at test numbers, it's just exactly what I just put in here. So you got the square brackets, and we have comma-separated values, so one, two, three, four, three and a half. 
each of these numbers are now in this list and represent a particular value in this list, right? The first thing I'm going to mention is that a list is ordered. By definition, we're going to have lists are going to have a particular order to them. So the first value in the list is always going to be first, then second, then third, then fourth, then fifth. So the position of the values in the list is going to be recorded. So to give you an example of how that could be useful, I'm going to make another list called favorite sports teams. And those favorite sports teams are going to be strings, right? So before, we've been dealing with numbers up until now. But remember before when we were printed Hello World, we used the single quotes. We're going to do that again here to represent our favorite football teams. So we could do something like New York Giants, New York Jets, oops, sorry, Jets, and then Buffalo Bills. So here we now stored three strings inside of a list. And this is just the collection of my favorite sports teams. So this variable favorite sports teams now stores all of the teams that I'm considering my favorite sports teams. And they're all football teams, New York Giants, New York Jets, and Buffalo Bills. And those are denoted using those square brackets. How could this be useful to us, right? So first off, we can now we can now refer to all of these objects that I have, right? All of these favorite sports teams, and I can use them in some way. So using having an idea of a collection of items rather than just a single value can be really useful to us. So I'm going to write down a piece of code, and I'm going to want you to think a little bit about what you think it does. And then the next video, we're going to talk about what it actually does and how it can be useful. Let's say I have these things in my favorite numbers equals to one, two, three, four. And say for number in favorite numbers, print number divided by two. I just want you to think a little bit about what this actually does. In the next video, we're going to talk through how this can be used in using this list. So favorite numbers here is a list. And then we're performing this code over that list. I just want you to think a little bit about what that does. In the next video, we're, we're going to talk about uh, what it does and how it can be used. Okay, thanks.